Welcome back to the Automation Podcast. My name is Sean Tierney with Insights in Automation. And this week on the show, I meet back up with John DeTellum of Siemens to learn all about TI Portal in the cloud, subscription bundles, and perpetual licensing. John, welcome back to the show. I'm looking forward to learning all about TI Portal in the cloud and the other things you're going to talk about. But first, for those who may not have uh, caught one of your previous episodes, appearances on our show, could you tell them a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely, Sean. Uh, John Tatellum. I do work here at Siemens in uh, Alpharetta, Georgia, and uh, fundamentally responsible for the industrial automation engineering software uh, for our automation products, uh, known as the TI Portal. Um, and I've worked for Siemens for about 17 years. And what are we talking about today? I think it's TI Portal in the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. But of course, I want to cover kind of the other facets or opportunities to get our, our your following on board with TI Portal. So I got a couple other um, variants of TI Portal covered at the end so everybody gets a full picture of what we offer when it comes to getting started in TI Portal or continue to maintain their solutions in the realm of the TIA, our Totally Integrated Automation, or the TI Portal. Um, but what I did is I pulled together um, some new stuff related to our release of uh, part number for the cloud-based solution. And that is exactly the same TI Portal B18 that customers are using today um, or other versions. Um, but I also want to go and highlight the fact that some customers aren't so willing to, uh, and they don't need the cloud-based stuff, but there's also the ability to get uh, familiar with a subscription bundle. And that's also available on an annual billing. And it's a bundled solution where you get more than one component in the bundles. And then the traditional perpetual licenses is still there um, with the ability to buy a step seven for PLCs, WinCC for HMI, uh, or a start drive for advanced drive configuration. Um, and keep that license for the life of your uh, factory plant or corporation. And then I'll. I'll close on a nice little pulling it all together and highlight some things that are coming in the next month. So number one, TI Portal in the cloud, and that's exactly what it is. It's offering uh, our users, our customers, um, educators, anyone that's interested in getting started with TI Portal um, and potentially doing some real true uh, deep engineering with uh, the TI Portal and the engineering aspect of it uh, in the cloud. Uh, so. The, the headquarters folks in uh, Europe and in Germany have worked together to create a, uh, a cloud-based solution that uh, holds RTI portal engineering software, the same one that you know today that's installed on uh, the instance of our computers on our, our local machines, is now residing in the cloud. Um, and what's available in that is basically um, a breadth of the products, including options. So you can see it's easier for us to offer it up as a, uh, a, a, a augmenting an access to additional software packages that we might not be able to um, uh, establish on our local um, workstations, but might want to be able to do it in the, in, the, in the cloud and play with that. But there's the step seven in WinCC, which is our traditional uh, PLC programming and HMI, along with the safety for doing the safety integrated. PLC, some advanced, of course, for simulating the PLC, the HMI, the safety, the motion, and the uh, HMI together um, on this on this cloud-based solution. And then we've got these other engineering options known as CVARC for generating the HMI screens off the PLC, Synamics, DCC, CNIT plan for uh, doing a network analysis of what our configuration is, the throughput on our devices, test suite for doing style guide checker, and um, uh, unit testing on our blocks, uh, energy suite, and uh, Simit as a demo for doing some of that uh, virtual commissioning stuff. What's cool about it is it's not only the current version, V18, up there, and, and soon, of course, I'm going to mention it coming in uh, uh, the end of November, it'll be updated to have a V19 instance, but it also goes back. So if I'm a customer that is fumbling around with a little bit of mixed versions, uh, this is a good place to potentially manage my uh, my previous version software projects um, and 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 transfer it and upgrade it and work it through to a V18 in this environment because it does have all of the packages that might be needed for making those migration steps. Um, but what we did in um, 
this last summer was we managed to get headquarters to agree to do a preliminary release of uh, uh, something sooner than what they had planned. They had planned the pay per use where you just get charged uh, hourly for each session that you use as you go through the month or monthly use uh, where you get access to it per the month. We managed to get them to provide a standard one year subscription as an introductory to this program before we get everything set up on these metering systems below. So that that option below um, or in the in the top here it says subscription annually um, is new uh, headquarters created that part number It's delivered just like every other standard software component through our online software delivery packaging where they'll get a PDF that gets them set up with the information that's required to give them access to the cloud. And of course, anyone that's listening today can Google. I just hit Google TI portal in the cloud and they can go to the website. Um, to go and activate themselves on a 21-day trial. So this is a great way for folks to just jump in and do your workshop at Automation School, the Step 7 classes, and have a 21-day access to something in the cloud. The uh, purchase version or the, uh, the, the, the version that is actually uh, funded does have the ability to um, set up a cloud connector, and fundamentally that's a secure uh, tool set that basically enables the ability of the cloud session on our browser to connect directly to um, and through our network port to connect to actual devices in our lab. So we can connect to an actual PLC, HMI and drive and use it remotely as well to connect to that. Oh, okay. That's how it works. I was wondering, can yeah. you only use it with the PLC SIM? But yeah, okay. Cloud connector, got it. Yep. Yeah. So fundamentally there's a uh, cloud connector. It's been, it's been, uh, Cloud Connector has been available for probably six years. It's been an offering where a customer could have their TI portal installed on a server and not on the local maintenance machines. Um, and it gave the maintenance guy the ability to um, use a browser to uh, RDP or VPN to their server to access the installed version of the TI portal and then just use their local HTML browser with Cloud Connector to connect to the devices. Uh, so that's the purpose of that that, that little add-on application. What's nice about it is I'll switch over to the screen. Um, is it is downloadable? So once you get set up with your instance of TI Portal in the cloud, you actually have uh, icons that help you get started with download the cl cloud connector, and it'll help you activate and connect the cloud to your local machine. Another key component is how do I get project files to and from the cloud? And there's a file share utility that is set up to exchange, exchange the data between uh, your cloud sessions and um, your local computer. So it's pretty exciting, pretty significant. Um, some of the, you know, the overview of the big picture opportunities is, is it's instant access to TI portal um, in the cloud without the need to download and do an install of the first steps. Um, and what's nice about it, it's got all of the options that we don't necessarily always get into um, and uh, have an opportunity to explore how it can help us better in our automation engineering environment. Uh, it is secure data storage in the cloud. Um, you always get an updated uh, version of the software. So this past August, there was an update to um, include the latest update in V18, which is update two. And I expect that in November, you'll see the update for V19 get released. Right now, we just strictly have the annual payment. Uh, it's the easiest, simplest way for us to put it through the common uh, order management systems we have in the U.S. Uh, that's the other thing that's pretty significant. It's pretty limited. Oh, I got that on the next slide, but um, I'll cover the where it's located. Um, Cloud-based file share. Um, again, some of the some of the key things that we like to highlight is I don't have to worry about my PC or my device. Uh, I just need HTML browser and uh, internet access, uh, so that I don't have to do the installation on my local machine. And then um, uh, we're looking at you know playing around with that tablet that you got um, and accessing it through there and verifying that it works on there. And we have a new PG that's coming out in November or December as well. Like I mentioned, uh, we really did push. Uh, our, my colleagues in Canada, myself, to get headquarters to work on something that we could get 
implemented with our process order management systems uh, this year uh, because it's been uh, a while before we've been able to get the uh, metering system set up in uh, what's required to, to do that billing um, based on a month or based on usage. Uh, but fundamentally, these are the ones that I'm aware of. Uh, you, if your listeners or followers are outside of these uh, of these countries, you need to really check with um, your local vendors or uh, um, suppliers to determine whether it's coming soon in your region. Uh, but you can basically Google TF Portal in the Cloud and determine whether you have access or not. The second opportunity is the subscription bundle. Uh, this is an, again another traditional ordered part through our order management system where a customer has the opportunity to get started with Step 7 Basic as a bundle where you've got the PLC programming together with the HMI and the safety all licensed together. And um, fundamentally, the cool thing about this is uh, it's just one part number that I got to worry about instead of three to six, potentially, if I manage the SUSs because this is auto renewing. And basically, I just have one part number for my engineering environment. Um, it renews at the end of the year with an, an updated PO, or you can cancel it and renew as required. This could be a, another opportunity to kind of scale up engineers on your team in the case that you don't need to buy them a license. Uh, so you could use this as a, as a tool to scale up your project team. And um, there's fundamentally at this point only four variants of a bundled solution, and they just basically scale up where they add more functionality or add more options as you scale up. So this is like the software we buy today, but you, when you buy it, you're buying it for 12 month period, correct? So we still correct. install it on my computer and I still run it locally, unlike the cloud, which is, which is in the cloud, but it only lasts for 12 months and either I renew or I cancel. But the advantage of this is like you said, is if you add some people and you know, maybe they're just going to fill in for a time and then they're going to go back to other projects. You can get them a subscription for a year and then you don't have to outlay a, a lifetime license for somebody who may be only working on a project for six months. It also could be for maybe an end user. They just, it's easier for them to put it in a maintenance budget and have it renewed every year and uh, then to buy the whole thing all at once, you know, so very interesting. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a convenience. Um, where it gives you the opportunity of a, another method of getting the licenses in place for your team. And like you said, some folks look at the opportunity to put that into a budget that is annual instead of making the, um, the, the investment of the perpetual licenses at the very beginning and, and looking at it that way. Um, so it, what's nice about it is, again, with the different solutions is they are all complementary to each other. So honestly, a lot of times when I tell the story, I see where all three fit into every situation where I might want a cloud instance for all the packages and all the versions accessible to my team. So I can go to a V15 or a V16 in the cloud and bang around and do stuff without trying to maintain that. Um, I might have a subscription package that I ramp up for oncoming team members that are supporting a project um, or doing year by year uh, work for myself. And then I, I'd still have my perpetual for the, the device that's on the machine, the device that's in the maintenance shop, um, and the device that I use. And I keep that that running and, and keeping going on there. So, yeah, I definitely see the clouds helpful, especially for engineering offices where, you know, the, you're, you're, you're almost always in the engineering office, you don't go out in the field much. Um, you get the stuff on your desk. You can be connected to the cloud. So you can hand off a project to somebody else because all the files are in the cloud and you're always up to date. You know, there's no time installing everything. So you makes you very efficient. But I'm glad you guys are keeping perpetual for the folks who are in the plant. Maybe they can't have any internet access on the plant, you know, zero trust and all that. And they just want to buy it and own it forever. So, you know, it's it's good that these new options are not replacing the old options. And it's always good to have options. Exactly. Yep, my that's my my perspective as well. So yeah, number three, we still have the perpetual licenses that everybody's been used to. I mean, my 17 years at Siemens, the one thing that I found so impressive is that a Step 7 version 5.2 from 2005 is upgradable to V19, um, and and that's pretty significant. 
at the fact that our customers have an investment of software that they've done with the investment in their automation environment. And it's it's easily that that license key alone um, in that automation license manager is upgradable to be a license that's valid. You're saying if I had a license key from 2005 and I came to you today and said, I want to upgrade this license key, you're not going to laugh at me and say, buy a new package? No. The 5.5, 5.x, there's a certain cutoff. I think it's 5.3. Yep. And I'm guessing that was 2005. But uh, there's a, a form factor of the license that was at 5.4 or 5.3 of the classic versions. And those are upgraded. Now, do I have to buy support for every year since 2000, whatever, to get that version 18? No, who would do that? That's ridiculous. I, you know, no. I, <laughs> I know. Well, I've I've heard rumors about other companies out there, so it's good that you can buy a license of a software and then buy an upgrade later, at a later date. And and even if you go three, four, five years, that license still has value, and that you're allowing them to upgrade, and you're not forcing them to buy, you know, five or ten years worth of support just to upgrade to the, to skip all those other versions and go right to the current version. So that's impressive. Yeah, absolutely. So we have two means of the perpetual license support. One is we offer a, a update service where they they basically have the option of when they buy the software that they buy this update service and for one year they'll get the updates. And a lot of customers just keep that auto renewing. Um, but there are other customers that once they buy V18, they're not going to change or upgrade to V19 uh, because it's going onto a machine that's been vetted and verified and audited based on the V18 solution. Um, so they don't they don't necessarily maintain their software with the update service. So they could go three or four years. And basically what we have is called upgrade packages. And an upgrade mm -hmm. package, if you look at the part number it, it, for the TI portal, it says V11, which was the first version that was released, V11 to V18 upgrade to V19. So basically it means um, if you had a license for V11 and you're ready now to make a step towards uh, V19, uh, you just buy an upgrade package to that. Now you got to have that v, V11 license on your mm -hmm. computer. It's got to be visible uh, because the upgrade package comes with an upgrade license that just bumps a V11 into a V19 and makes it work for all of the versions that existed before V19. And there's a combo version that includes that uh, version 5.5, 5.7 that does both step sevens. Yeah, that's a that's amazing. And I think a lot of vendors don't realize that OEMs and system integrators, they get pulled in a lot of directions. They may be doing a lot of Siemens today, but next year they may get a big project that's, you know, with other vendors stuff. And so they may not use Siemens for a year or two. I know it doesn't make Siemens happy, but, you know, this is what happens. OEMs and, and SIs, they have to go with what the customers want. And so then they find themselves coming back and getting to work with TIA Portal again. They're like, oh, we need to get our license upgraded. And it's good that you're not saying, well, you know, it's been four years. You're going to buy four years worth of support. Or, oh, it's been four years? You're out of luck. You're going to buy a new license. I know some other vendors are going to that model, and it's a horrible model. So I, I just wanted to comment on that because I think the way you guys are doing it is the way that the industry has kind of been the industry standard. And it's really, in my opinion, the right way. I, I've been in both worlds. 15 years on the other side, and then mm -hmm. I've been 17 years here. And to me, this this concept really uh, enables our customers with the most flexibility. And, and the key is the license key and the automation license manager on my computer. And the, if I'm moving this computer to another computer, it's transferable, transferable up to the server, um, to a drive on the server that's mapped or to a USB drive. Um, so I can always move that license around. I get a lot of customers that um, blew away their license. So I'm like, hey, just put a USB stick in there, drag and drop it from Automation License Manager and move it off, um, put it on the server. And th there's a video on there on, on the Knowledge Hub uh, for Siemens that shows how to park licenses in uh, Amazon server. And, and the other key thing to that is if you, as long as you have the certificate online, the online software delivery always has your certificate number, um, mm -hmm. our tech support can reset those licenses. Perfect. So these are the packages that if, if you're going to get started with TI Portal on a component level, like uh, step seven for the PLC here in the in this corner, 
uh, WinCC for the uh, WinCC Unified for the HMI. Um, then you're going to buy a package of Step Seven and a package of WinCC, and basically you get two license keys in there. So that's the concept of buying the individual components versus what we've talked about so far. So perpetual licenses um, that you buy for the life of um, the license, you look at like a step seven license and a package or a WinCC. And fundamentally, um, these are, I kind of dropped in the license keys in here. Not every component is licensed. So you can actually download TI Portal trial software, make one install with DVD one, and you fundamentally have step seven win CC and it's, it's going to run, it's going to open, it's going to let you create a project. It's going to let you browse the hardware catalog. It doesn't check for a license key until you try to do a PLC or an HMI. And I'm sure you've seen that, right, Sean? Mm -hmm. yep. So what, what the trial installation of the TI portal does is when I try to add a PLC, it's like, Oh, I'm looking at a 1500. Let's look for a, Step seven professional license, um, and it'll pop up and it'll say, oh, no license found. And there's a nice little dialogue that says, hey, do you want to activate your 21 tri day trial? Mm -hmm. A lot of people hit cancel or don't select the, the right key. There's a an option in there to select step seven professional uh, because sometimes more than one license trial can be active. So you have to click the step seven professional, activate the trial license, and you have 21 days of the perpetual software install to do that. Uh, so I kind of want to make sure that people understand that whether you buy step seven perpetual license package or WinCC, um, you still get the same installation of TI portal as the core. That's great. And I love too that it's self-service. So, you know, for the students at the automation school, you know, when they're ready to go through all the exercises, you know, I walk them through, you know, this is how you get it. This is how you install it. And this is when you activate it. And I also show them how to see how many days they have left. And, you know, they can go right, they don't have to call on anybody, they don't have to interface, they can go right to your website, sign up for an account that usually takes a day um, to get the confirmation back, and then they can download the software and install it. And um, I do I do warn them, though, it's 21 days from the from the time you activate that trial. It's not like 21, you know, it's not like 21 times 24 hours, you know, it's 21 day trial. And that's how most trials are, they, they go by the, the, the time you launch the software and start the trial. But it's phenomenal, it's a good way to, Make sure you're you're comfortable with the software. You can you get around in it. You know, if your computer crashed, you could always just take a brand new computer off the shelf and go get a 21 day trial, right? Yep, absolutely. Until, yep. until you you know to get through the weekend until you can call somebody to get get your computer fixed. Yep, absolutely. That's that's another key thing. A lot of people come to me with an emergency. I'm I blew away my software. My computer died. I lost my computer. I'm like, hey, just download the trial. It's the same install as what comes in the package from the DVD. Uh, it, and you activate the 21 days and you're running. So it's great stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So one thing we, we kind of, I, I just kind of want to emphasize here when you get it into the pe perpetual licenses is, you know, something like the step seven, for example, there's two variants. There's the step seven basic that is for the 1200s. And then there's the step seven professional. Because some folks are just in the 1200 environment mm -hmm. when it comes to controllers and basic controllers. So in that case, if they're just buying 1200s, um, they're just gonna look at a step seven basic package, um, which is fundamentally fairly cheap, cost effective. Yeah, um, really. And what's cool about that purchase is it actually is a full install of the same thing you get with the other one. So it's TI Portal step seven professional install, uh, plus safety, plus WinCC advanced and unified, um, and it comes with start drive and it comes with PLC SIM. Um, so what's cool about that is I buy that and then I get all these other additional things with that small PLC programming software. And this is where the license key comes in as a step seven basic. And then when we grow up and we start adding safety into our little controller, then I just buy a safety license. And remember that it was already part of that installation file. So they already had the safety installed in there. They just couldn't necessarily uh, add the safety programmer until they um, went through the 21 days um, or purchased that license. Yeah, you know, one thing I tell my students is when you, if you're going to download the trial, don't forget to get PLC SIM as well. It's a separate download in many cases 
So um, just make sure you're getting both because you'll want, if you're trying the uh, TIA portal, you also want to try PLC sim. It just Absolutely. makes it, it's a free PLC simulator, but go ahead. Nope, you're right. Absolutely. I, I kind of always try to make sure that people understand there's one main install and then there's two or three others that really finish it off. Um, the start drive is an install. The PLC sim is an install. But yeah, you're right. We have to kind of reiterate that over and over again. Um, and I did make a screenshot of what it looked like. So this was activating that ISO file that you saw on the previous screen. Mm -hmm. um, and it does come up and it basically you know, has this step seven professional um, plus safety together with WinCC Advanced is the uh, engineering solution for the HMI that we've had for the last 10 years. Um, and then the Unified is the new generation that we're going for the future. And then you've got the options in here. But um, like I mentioned over and over again, the, the package that install is um, bundled installation of TI Portal because there's so many common things between the Step 7 and the WinCC and the WinCC Unified um, that it doesn't make sense to break out the installs. And, and it's really better for the project files that we see customers using anyway. That way you're not dealing with more than one install. Um, but it also includes a lot of the, the options. VCI version control interface is free. Project server is uh, included in the install. It's a free tool. Uh, Multi-users installed. Library included. Um, compare utilities, motion, user management, access control, and UMC, and the openness is all included in this install. Um, options that you can that you can do in the framework are, is uh, project server and multi-user for 21 days, cloud connector, and then the ProDiag and the OPC are runtime licenses, but they're built into this install. And then these get into the additional installs that you, like you mentioned, the PLC SIM, um, the HMI is now an additional installation for unified and panel images. And yeah, actually. explain panel images because, uh, you know, when I first saw that, I thought that was like, oh, these are graphics for the panels. So they're an actual image of the OS, the operating system. And uh, the operating system gets delivered as the latest and greatest operating system. And um, it could be that maybe uh, you want to downgrade it to a previous version. Uh, so these panel images, if I'm working in TI Portal V17 and I get a brand new panel and I, I'm not ready yet to update my project to V18, I can um, actually the generally the latest image should support V17. So you'll get, a, you'll get a little warning message saying, hey, the panel is newer than your version, but it'll still work. Uh, we try to do that with all of our devices is be device compatibility replacement in the field. Uh, but the panel images basically are, if I have WinCC Unified, I have V16 images, V17 images, and V18 images, depending on what you want to be in the device um, so that you can update the image. And because there are images on a device such as of the Unified panels, the Comfort panels, um, they're huge. <laughs> so we broke those out into a separate download and a separate installation. Yeah, I always tell people think of it as like an image of your hard drive, yep. Or or firmware, like other other HMIs will call it firmware, you know. And and sometimes that nomenclature is wrong because their firmware includes an operating system as well. But that's what the panel. Did. I always think of it as like an image of your hard drive, but it's an image of the uh, of the internal memory of the panel itself with the OS and all the the runtime software and everything like that. You know, before you leave the screen too, I, I just wanted to show people. Um, and for those listening who can't see this, um, one of the reasons when I was was installing this for the first time that I left the default selected. It's because it doesn't take up. We're not talking like 500 gigabytes of software. I mean, if we look at what you have, you have uh, this is for seven. I think this is seven. This is 18. So you have uh, Step 7 Pro, Step 7 Safety, WinCC Advanced, WinCC Unified, Options and Tools, and you're at 10 gig. That's not a yeah. whole lot. That's not a lot. Awesome. No. On my local machine here, I actually have V16, V17, V18, and V19 Pilot installed on my computer. Yeah, it's gotten really uh, performant, uh, the installation, I feel, um, and easy. Uh, so it, it's really powerful to, to explain some of these new ways that we've really evolved to that strategy. 
I, I use this slide sometimes to kind of like break down some of the, the concepts. Everybody, you know, we've been talking about the engineering licenses, the step seven and the WinCC, uh, but there are runtime certificate licenses for things like OPC UA and the, and the PLC and a smart server on the HMI and other topics. So this is how one thing we break out is there are engineering type licenses and then there's um, runtime type licenses that are related to devices. Um, some of the drives have the requirement of the license key being transferred to the drive and, and present on the drive. Um, some of the other devices like the PLCs just require that you have the certificate and you acknowledge that you've licensed the device, but there's no real actual transfer of the device. Um, our download is the best way to get the delivery because it's so traceable and trackable. Your certificate always resides in the cloud based on your email address. Um, the files for download always, always exist on the cloud. Um, and if you get where you lo lose it, you get the certificate from the cloud, send it to tech support, you can get a reset. Um, the DVD, some customers demand that um, package delivery uh, for installation on a device, but problem is a lot of the devices don't have DVD players anymore. Mm -hmm. And the only place the certificate exists is right here. The only place that number exists. So you have to hold on to that piece of paper. Just put it on. And I mentioned the annual agreement, the update service. That's a one-year agreement that you keep maintained on all your components. And then we mentioned the upgrade, the 14 in this screenshot, the V19. Uh, I'll get a whole new list of part numbers for V19. Anyone out there, anyone, anyone that has outdated uh, TI Portal software, Step 7, licensing, WinCC, um, now's your opportunity uh, to do an upgrade towards uh, V19. Once that releases in November, we'll have a whole new set of part numbers. And then, of course, um, if I started with that Step 7S 1200 basic or safety basic, we have power packs that allow you to power pack up. So we're, we're always basically capable of supporting almost every situation. I think it's pretty significant. All right, that was basically the summary, three different options. Um, the traditional professional licensing, as we've have always had, we're looking to keep that moving towards the forward. Um, the subscription bundles we've had for two years, really a nice way to um, move that expense into another budget and keep it ongoing um, at a different annual rate. Um, and only deal with one single part number for what I need. And then what, what's cool is augmenting into the cloud and exploring what we can do with TI Portal and the options in the cloud environment. And just to kind of tease some of the other topics that we're going to be coming to you with in the next um, quarter or um, into 2024 is, of course, our TI Portal B19 launches in November. Um, so that'll be our next generation. Um, of course, our TI Portal V19 will be capable and still programming our traditional somatic controllers. Um, and our traditional somatic con controllers is not only just the basic and the advanced and the distributed controller, but uh, we also have software controllers in that family. So this device is a software controller, and this device here is a software controller. But also in the, the uh, uh, November SPS Fair, they're going to announce uh, the release of the virtual PLC, which is also configured here in our V19 TI portal. Um, Somatic AX is going to be an extension to the engineering. Um, it's going to be uh, fundamentally linked to be able to engineer code in VS Code in the Somatic AX framework um, and collaborate together with TI portal in a couple different means of creating library, uh, executable only libraries or uh, uh, driving uh, code into the actual PLC from Somatic AX collaborated with DI Portal. Uh, so these two have the opportunity to um, augment each other, uh, providing the traditional lateral logic programming and configuration of TI Portal together with potentially some IT concepts of uh, executable blocks that do not have a purpose of being readable, um, but need to be called within the PLC to execute an IT or upper level type system that is more better served in a VS Code programming. Uh, and, and, and then going into the future, 
Um, the concept is fundamentally that there will be the opportunities where somatic AX can do uh, standalone programming. It's not there yet. The first versions will be collaborative with TI Portal, um, but there will be cases where some, some applications, some unique solutions, some unique individuals and corporations will look at uh, using that type of environment to program their automation environment. Um, so we'll have both of those there. Um, and of course, the v VPLC is focused in within the industrial edge ecosystem provided by Siemens. So it's going to be part of that ecosystem. And then whenever we get into, you know, presenting this uh, future of automation couple to get together with today, I want to make sure people understand that there's still PLC SIM and PLC SIM advanced for simulation, virtual commissioning and digital twin. Uh, some people see the, the virtual PLC and think that's some kind of uh, simulation or virtual commissioning, and um, that is not the case. The VPLC is to be in the plant. It is to be a runtime device. It is to be part of your production and operation system based on a, a powerful edge ecosystem and um, connectivity and security. Um, it is not to replace PLCs in the traditional machine, and it is not uh, to replace um, the concept of simulation with PLCs in advanced. Yeah, I think um, I look forward to learning about all this new stuff. A lot of this stuff is new to me, and I'm sure it's new to the audience as well. So really looking forward to it. And John, I want to thank you for uh, coming on the show and bringing us up to speed on the cloud, on the subscription, and of course on the um, on the Precho licenses. Is there anything else you want to cover before we close out? No, I provided some links for uh, getting to the website, the TI Portal and Cloud. But yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. John, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate the update and uh, just appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Sean. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And I want to thank John for taking time off his busy schedule to come back on the show and bring us up to speed on TIA Portal. Now, if you did enjoy this episode, please give us a like, a sub, and a share. That is the fuel that keeps this show going. And if you want to follow me or join our community, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. You'll also find all of my training courses, including my course on S7 PLCs and TIA Portal Step 7 over at theautomationschool.com. And with that, I want to wish you all a awesome, courageous, and fearless week. And until next time, my friends, peace.